Hello, my name is Simonize and welcome to another Simonize Guide video. I just finished getting all six new runes for rogues in Season of Discovery Phase 3 and in this short video I'll tell you what they do, if I think they're good, and most importantly, how to get them. I'm not trying to waste your time so let's get right to it with the wrist runes. The first wrist rune is Unfair Advantage. This rune makes it so whenever you dodge an attack, you instantly get a free main hand attack against the target whose attack you dodged. This is really great on tank rogues or just anytime you're out soloing in the world since it gives a lot of extra damage, but it's almost useless as a DPS rogue in a group setting since you're not taking attacks so you won't be dodging much and you're not getting anything out of this rune. Unfair advantage is quick and easy and is found in Tanaris. First, you'll need to go to the Lost Rigger Cove on the eastern coast and pickpocket or kill pirates until you get the Kidnapper's Coin Purse. Open up the purse and you'll find the Precious Medallion. When you take this to Jabby at Steamweedle Port, he'll tell you a sad story about his dearest Eni and award you the Unfair Advantage rune. The next wrist rune is Carnage. This causes all your abilities to deal 20% increased damage as long as you have a bleed effect active on your target. This is very powerful when combined with Garrote Opener and then using Rupture throughout the fight. You can also use Saber Slash as a bleed to activate Carnage, but Saber Slash is still a fair bit weaker in comparison to Mutilate. Anyways, the rune is found in Blasted Lands in this tower here. You'll need to have 225 lockpicking to open this chest which will spawn an NPC that attacks you, you kill it, and loot the rune. I didn't have lockpicking that high, so I used dark leather gloves made by a leather worker to give plus 5 skill to help reach 225. If you're unsure where to go to level your lockpicking, Wowhead has a great guide for it that I used to level mine, and I've linked in the video description if you guys want to see that too. The third wrist rune is Cut to the Chase. This rune causes an active slice and dice to be refreshed up to its five combo point maximum duration whenever you hit with Eviscerate or Envenom. You can also refresh the duration of Blade Dance 2 if you're using that as a tank. Cut to the Chase is another very powerful wrist rune that will result in a big damage increase. This rune comes from the new Emerald Warden's reputation at friendly rep level. You can gain reputation with the Emerald Wardens by doing Nightmare Incursions at any of the Emerald Dream portals around the world. That is its own whole discussion and if you want to learn more about how to do those, I have a video for that linked in the description that you can check out. With the three wrist runes out of the way, let's check out the helm runes. The first helm rune is Focused Attacks. With this rune equipped, whenever you do a melee critical strike, you'll instantly regenerate two energy. While this is a good effect, it simply does not come close to the power level of other helm rune options, and I do not recommend using it. That being said, it is pretty easy to pick up. Travel to Hinterlands and come to these small troll ruins in the eastern portion of the zone. Before looting the chest, cast Blind on the Vile Branch Mask. If you don't, the mask will burn you before you can open the chest. Once the mask is blinded, you can safely loot the chest and walk away with your rune. The final two runes are a bit more involved and will require more effort than the first four. The Honor Among Thieves Head Rune gives you loads of combo points. A free combo point whenever any player in your party scores a critical strike with an ability. In a good group, this will be a free combo point about every other second, which is very strong. But the power of this rune depends on the other people in your party. Sometimes it will not be very good if your group members are not getting critical strikes very often. The Honor Among Thieves room starts out in a familiar manner, receiving a mysterious message in your mailbox, but this time it's not going to be from C, but from the Grandmaster Rogue himself, Farad of Ravenhold. You'll need to be at least level 45, have acquired the Shadow Step rune, and also completed the quest called the Manor Ravenhold that introduces you to the Ravenhold faction. If you haven't done this quest yet, any rogue trainer in a major city should offer it to you with a dialogue option, giving you a quest starter item that starts the quest. Once all these conditions are met and you enter a major city, the mail from Farad should arrive in your mailbox. Instead of heading to the drop box in Silver Pine Forest, you'll head first to talk to Farad in Ravenhold. He'll send you to Zulfarok for another exciting solo stealth mission. Inside Zulfarok, your first objective is to loot two Vile Concoction. These can be found in two huts in the instance and you should be able to loot them without entering combat with any of the nearby trolls. Once you get both of these, head to Antu Sol and use the Vile Concoction when you're near. This will kill Antu Sol and you can safely loot his satchel on the ground for the offering of bone. Next, you're headed to Witch Doctor Zumra and you'll dispatch him with your second concoction the same way. Loot his satchel and equip the Ward of the Dead trinket you get from it. This will highlight a specific one of the graves nearby 
and you'll wanna loot that grave for the Offering of Flesh item. Now you can right click the Offering of Flesh to combine it with the Offering of Bone to form the Blood Magic Essence. With the Essence in hand, you can go to the Giant Pyramid and climb on the walls to the north. With some careful jumps, you can make it up into the elevated huts and find a small chest that contains a hollow emblem. The emblem combines with the Essence to make an Emblem of Blood Magic. A quick hop down to the ground and you can then climb the stairs of the pyramid and loot the Talisman of Kazdor from the big chest at the top of the pyramid. With the Talisman in hand, you can return to Farad at Ravenholt and after talking to a few other Ravenholt NPCs, Farad will award you the Honor Among Thieves rune as well as this really cool cloak that makes doing sneaky rogue stuff way better. It provides a whopping three levels of increased stealth as well as increased range to pickpocket, disarm trap, and distract. The final rune for your helmet is combat potency. This rune causes all your offhand attacks to have a 20% chance to generate 15 energy. That counts for your auto attacks and also for mutilates offhand damage. This is another very powerful helmet rune, but if you choose to use it, you'll want to make sure you pick a very fast offhand weapon. Faster weapon speed means more attacks, means more combat potency energy. You'll need some help to get this rune done, but lucky for you, the quest chain that awards it also rewards a rune for every other class the Wild Gods quest. I recommend a group of five since you'll be going into high level dungeons and killing elites. The Wild Gods quest starts from Shadowtooth Emissary at the Emerald Sanctuary in Southern Felwood. This quest cannot be shared, so everyone in your group will need to travel here to start the quest. The next step is to go to Hinterlands and kill elite trolls in Jintha Allure until one drops a Wild Whisper draft. Technically, only one person in your group needs to have this, but it's always nice to have some help killing the elites. Meet up with the rest of your team at Razorfen Downs once someone has a Wild Whisper draft. You're here to kill the final boss, Amninar the Coldbringer. After Amninar is dead, you can use your Wild Whisper draft and it will summon the spirit of Agamagon. Turn in the Wild God's quest to Agamagon and he will give you a follow-up quest of the same name, but with different objectives. Now you're looking for three wild offerings and are given Agamagon's Roar item to allow you to get these. The wild offerings can be found in three different dungeons, Moradin, Blackrock Depths, and Zulfurok. For each dungeon, you'll need to kill particular bosses and this will cause a shadowy presence to spawn in the instance. When it does, you'll get an emote in your chat box to let you know that the presence has spawned. Using the Agamagon's Roar item near the shadowy presence will cause it to become attackable and you'll need a few folks to take it down. In Marden, you need to kill Princess Theradras and then a shadowy devil sar will spawn and walk around the waters near the princess. In Blackrock Depths, you'll need to kill Interrogator Gerston, Houndmaster Grebmar, and clear the Ring of Law. This will cause a shadowy basilisk to spawn on the Dark Iron Highway. That's the area between Lord Incendius and Balegar. If you have the Shadowforge key, this is easy to get to by just taking a left at the start of the instance. But if not, you'll need to work your way around above the Ring of Law and jump out a window onto the highway area. In Zulfurok, you'll need to kill the Witch Doctor Zumra and also Gazrilla. Then a shadowy spider will spawn either in Gazrilla's area or slightly south and patrol into Gazrilla's area. Remember, you'll need someone in your party to have the Mallet of Zulfurok to be able to summon Gazrilla. Azrilla. While you could do one shadowy presence in each dungeon, I recommend that you instead pick one dungeon and do it three times, and also that you don't pick Blackrock Depths. There's a lot to work through in that dungeon with large packs of multiple high-level mobs. Going into Marden for princess runs and taking an extra minute to kill the shadowy Devilsar or Zulfrox strictly for the shadowy spider three times will get the job done quite a lot easier than doing three different dungeons. However you choose to do it, once you've gotten the three wild offerings, return to Felwood and speak again with the Shadowtooth Emissary. Completing the quest will award you with your combat potency rune and also unlock the vendor menu from the Shadowtooth Emissary. You can find your best in slot ring, Band of the Wilds, as well as a very good trinket, Breadth of the Beast, from this vendor in exchange for 12 more wild offerings each. He will also sell you a random Dark Moon card for 10 wild offerings if you don't need any of the gear. And that's all you need to know to get all six of the new runes for rogues in phase three of Season of Discovery. The new Sunken Tumble raid is looking pretty tough, so you'll definitely want to get your hands on these powerful runes to have the best chance at taking down the bosses. If you want to see me live roguing it up in Season of Discovery, come by the Twitch stream. We're normally live Monday through Friday from 1 p.m. EST to about 7 p.m. EST, but we'll be doing weekend streams this weekend with the launch of Phase 3. That's linked in the video description if you want to check it out, and I say thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having fun in Season of Discovery, and I hope you have a great day.